Coming up on FYI, what should we do if a story in the news upsets us? And what do Liam Payne, Mo Farah and Eva Abley from Britain's Got Talent all have in common? They're all on this week's FYI. Welcome to FYI, the only news show where people our age get to investigate the big stories and how they affect us. FYI is where you get your say and all the latest info from us. So let's start off with a warning from charities about the three C's and how they affect millions of children. So Oxfam and Save the Children hit the headlines saying the three C's, conflict, COVID-19 and climate change has led to a massive shortage of food in East Africa, what's called a famine. Families are fleeing their homes from fighting. The pandemic also means that many people are unable to farm the land and distribute food and drought is killing crops. And when we head over to Asia, children across India and Bangladesh have seen their homes and schools destroyed by flooding from more extreme weather because of climate change. But we can all do something to help. Check this out. This is the moment pupils from John Bramston Primary School got a surprise visit from singer Liam Payne and athlete Mo Farah. So they're touring schools to spread the word about the Soccer Aid School Challenge. The idea is to get us all to organise a sponsored sport event at our schools to raise money for the children's charity UNICEF, which with other charities helps millions of children around the world. It's about being able to just engage with kids and letting kids have fun and take part in different you know, games and stuff and that's what we did, we got involved ourselves. And it was just nice to see the kids smiling at us and going, getting involved, because that's what it's all about. Every kid out there in the world should be able to, you know, go out there and play and, and, and smile. It's such a big nationwide thing they can all get involved with. All it takes is a ball and a few obstacles. You can make it up yourself, the creativity's there. And once again, kids get to play whilst doing something great. So it's massively important. Liam and Mo Farah have teamed up with loads of other stars to take on the England team at the Soccer Aid footy match on June 12th which since it started has raised £60 million. Good job, man. Well, sticking with football, your team's done all right. Yeah, not too bad. So Manchester City have won the Premier League again. We scored three in five minutes, which is incredible. We took it down to the wire. But overall, the Premier League is blue again. Well, I'm not into football, but I think that's pretty amazing. It was, it was pretty good. The atmosphere was incredible. I mean, what a game. So we are. So here's a picture with me in the Premier League trophy. Look at it, it's got the blue ribbons on, of course. So we found a viral video that could be fake or fact. This is the Russian president Vladimir Putin in a televised address to the nation. It went viral because when translated, he announced the end of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, saying we've managed to reach peace with Ukraine. But sadly, it's fake. In fact, social media companies were quick to highlight it's a deep fake. These videos are created by using digital technology to edit a false mouth onto the face, which matches the words of an impersonator's voice. Still to come, an FYI News Club member takes us into the world of immersive art, and we chat to the Britain's Got Talent act everyone is talking about, Eva Abley. <laughs> The recent shooting at a school in America will be something you'll have heard about. And of course, it's really upsetting. We all have a right to go to school and not to have to worry about our safety. But at least 19 children and two teachers lost their lives at the Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, when an 18-year-old opened fire. This is one of many shootings in schools and communities in America over the years. And we did some research. America has a massive problem with gun violence. That's because, by law, every American over the age of 18 has the right to own guns for sport and protection, and there aren't many background checks in place to make sure they're a responsible adult. There are as many guns in America as there are people, and increasingly, guns are falling into the wrong hands. Enough is enough! Enough is enough! enough. A lot of Americans are calling for gun control, meaning more background checks on people who want to buy a gun but equally, a lot of Americans, including powerful politicians, 
feel strongly about the right to own a gun without too many questions. They are known as the gun lobby. In reaction to the shooting in Texas, this is what President Biden had to say. Why do we keep letting this happen? Where in God's name is our backbone to have the courage to deal with it and stand up to the lobbies? It's highly unlikely that gun violence would ever be a problem in the UK because we have very strict controls over who can own a gun and what it can be used for. We've got hold of FYI psychologist Laverne for more advice. Hi, Laverne. Hi there. So when we do see news like this that is really upsetting, what do you think the best ways are to try and get through it? Well, I think that it's really important that everybody recognises that they're going to have a slightly different response, and that's OK. But if you have found it upsetting, then I think it's really important you do the things that can be helpful. So that might be talking to adults, so for example, your parents or your friends. But really what we want young people to do is to make sure they take care of themselves. And one way to do that is to make sure you get your news from a, a news source that you really do trust. So for example, like FYI, and helps you understand the facts. So some of us go on holiday to America or have friends and family there and are feeling quite anxious. You know, when we get a shock, we have to think, well, is this something that happens a lot? And actually, in actual fact, these things do not happen as often as perhaps our brains might make us feel. And then I think as you think sort of more slowly through your responses, then you can get back to a place where you can sort of trust your accuracy and think, well, actually, no, going on holiday to America is something I'm looking forward to. I don't need to be worried about this. And then in turn, thinking about family and friends there that actually are living their lives very, very well because these events are not very common. They're very rare. Well, that's really great advice. Thank you so much for speaking to us. That's great. Nice to see you again. So, Braden, what are we going to do about these? I'm not sure. What are we going to do about these? Well, I mean, it makes me so angry to see how many airlines hand out water in plastic bottles. I mean, on a British Airways flight, it's like 250 passengers. I mean, it's not the best option, but they can be recycled. Yeah, but that's why I like to use these. When I go to the airport, when I go through security, I have it empty, and then just before I board the plane, I fill it up with water. But I was confused why British Airways were still giving out plastic bottles of mineral water. So I wrote to them asking why and their response was saying that, you know, yeah, they are guilty of still using plastic bottles, but they're trying to move away from that, so they're using plastic bottles made of recycled material. Nice one, Scarlett. Now, it's not just down to us to bring you guys stories and FYI. If you've got an issue that you want to have a say on, then just let us know. Even better, set up an FYI news club at your school. Members get the chance to report for FYI, make a film about their own story. We might even film it for you. And news club members can have their say right here on FYI. Just get a teacher to head to our webpage for more details. So, Braden, have you ever been to an art exhibition, a ballet, an opera, or a musical? Well, I have been to a musical, don't mind a musical, and I have been to an art exhibition, but I've never really thought about an opera. Well, I love acting, so I'll go for a musical any day. But how do you know if you don't give it a go? The pandemic means loads of us missed out on school trips to shows, exhibits, or museums. So for one week in June, the channel Sky Arts is providing loads of resources and experiences for our teachers to help us get out of the classroom and give art and the performing arts a go. It's called Access All Arts Week. We sent FYI News Club member and keen artist Ava to check out the kind of thing you could be doing. Here's her report from the UK's first immersive digital art exhibition. It's an art gallery like nothing I've ever seen before. This is a 360 degree digital exhibition. You can step right into the art and experience it in ways that you can't with traditional galleries. It feels like I'm in space. I can't believe that computers have imagined this. It looks to me as if it's hand designed by the artist himself. This exhibition is called Machine Memoirs Space. Two million images of space taken by NASA were fed into a computer which then showed its own version of what it imagined our universe to look like. And the artist Rafik Anadol chatted to me about what inspired him to make a digital exhibition. What do you want people to experience when they step into your exhibition? What do you want them to feel? So the piece here is an immersive architectural experience that I feel like people are stepping inside an artwork and the artwork is all around you. 
What made you want to look at outer space? I think as humanity, space is one of the most common excitements for many of us. Uh, where are we going? What's, is there life in the space? And AI, clearly, it's our future, and it's now. We know that machines can learn, right? But can a machine dream? I think this question is really very exciting. I think my friends would really, really love it because they just love art and painting and drawing. And I would definitely recommend this to anyone of all ages. Nice one, Ava. Now, everybody's been talking about the 14-year-old stand-up comedian that wowed the judges on Britain's Got Talent, Eva Abley. Take a look at this. Now, before I start, I would like to apologise if you can't understand me. I got a disability called cerebral palsy and I'm from a black country. <laughs> Eva revealed she has a disability called cerebral palsy and she had a hard time at school for seven years, but she's clearly come out on top. So there's nothing more we like here on FYI than beating the bullies. So we invited Eva into the studio. Hi there, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So first of all, you was amazing on Britain's Got Talent. You were so funny. Oh, thank you. No, no, it's, it's so true, really. You got everybody laughing. And did comedy maybe help you overcome a tough time at school? Yeah, so I find with my speech, as soon as I start to talk to someone, my speech would put people off and they would avoid me. So you telling them a joke would break the ice and they would start to get to know me. That's incredible. I mean, it takes so much guts just to do stand-up comedy in the first place, and especially on Britain's Got Talent. So how was that for you? Honestly, it was just amazing. It was my first time ever on stage. And I just had no time for nerves, my excitement. Took over. I know I'd be really nervous if I had to do that. <laughs> you said that was your first time on stage. I mean, you would never think it. You looked like a professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first time ever. And you had the judges up on their feet and you had the public in stitches. As I say, everybody was laughing. I mean, how did it feel to get that reaction? It just felt because I've had years and years of tough time at school, it felt nice for people to have a good reaction to me and put a massive smile on my face and I felt like I was just being me. I wasn't hiding away from anyone. I just felt amazing. Everybody loved it, didn't they? Yeah. Everybody loved it. <laughs> so what advice would you give to someone who might be going through, you know, a tough time with other people? Just be you, don't hide away and don't care about what anyone thinks of you. As long as you're happy with yourself, that's all what matters. It's so amazing that you're showing other people that might be a bit different, that they can do everything that everyone else can do. Really inspirational. Oh, thank you guys so much. I wish yeah. you all the best and we can't wait to see what you do in the future. Thank you guys so much for being amazing being here today. Thank you. Well, it's been great talking to you, so thank you so much for your time. And if you want to find out more about how to get some help if you are having a tough time, just head to our webpage at first.news forward slash FYI. So we're all gearing up for a long bank holiday weekend to mark the Queen's 70 years on the throne. The longest serving monarch ever. Exactly. And finally, we leave you with messages for Her Majesty from FYI News Club members. See you next time for a right royal FYI. Bye. Bye. Hello, Your Majesty. We would like to congratulate you on your platinum jubilee. I hope you enjoyed your time on the throne. We're very proud to have you as our Queen. Congratulations on your 70th Platinum Jubilee. I'm grateful to you because you're very good at running the country, even though you don't totally run it, Boris Johnson does. You are amazing!